Welcome to the art and science of complex sales. You've joined us in the coaching quarter. This podcast is dedicated to elevating the sales profession. Our listeners range from first-time salespeople to seasoned sales leaders and driven CEOs. They all come to learn from the best in the business. As we interview top sales transformation specialists, go-to-market leaders, revenue thought leaders, and more with only one question on our minds, how we get better together. This 12-episode quarter brought to you by Membrane.com will start to hone in on a key element in performance, sales coaching. Each of our guests speaks to this a bit differently and brings their own unique take, but all cover the topic, how to execute, and the exponential impact it makes. So let's start shining bright and get kicked off with today's guest. Selling from the heart is not a soft skill. Bringing a confident, empowered, and servant leadership inspired you to a customer in a deal is one of the most important things any seller can do for success. Larry Levine is about to give us a master class into what this means. A successful salesperson and leader turned author and coach, Larry has taken his greatest lessons in life and sales and shared them with us in an amazing book, Selling from the Heart. Today, he dives into why and how this is making a difference in the lives of salespeople and the revenue of companies in a unique and compelling way. So let's get started with Larry Levine. All right, Larry, welcome to the show. How the heck are you? Well, Paul Fuller, what's happening? Hey, by the way, I've been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So we're going to well, have a great time. Well, that's fantastic because I have. I have. I have ah, it's all good. No, I have as well. I've been really <laughs> pumped. Up, been really pumped about this. I've, I know a lot of, we know a lot of mutual people, but yep, be sure this is the first time, first time we've ever really gotten in depth together. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll see where this thing goes. Well, I have to ask you the question that we start every uh, sales professional off with, which is, Larry, can you define sales? I'm going to do it as short and concise as I possibly can. Good. And, I'll, uh, and I, it's all about this. It's all about the art of the help. And that's how I define sales. And I go back, Paul, to it was probably one of the very first podcasts I was on. And I was asked, I was asked just the same question. But then it was set up with, it's got to be one short, concise sentence. How would you define sales? And I just simply said, it's the art of the help. The art of the help. Yeah. And just, that's just, that's just think about that for a moment. It's, um, you know, when I say it is there, there's so many definitions. I mean, we could go into encyclopedia length version of how would y'all define sales, but it all just goes back to my why. And my why is I believe success happens when I contribute to a greater cause. And that shined through my decades and decades and decades in sales. And I have the contributing mindset. And in order to have a contributing mindset, you must be willing to help. And if you're not willing to help, then I question, why are you in sales? You see, I'm actually a little bit speechless because you have that so well so well defined and put together so let's talk about a couple of the aspects of that before we dive in so you have your why so your purpose right um and that's really where you start from correct absolutely okay how did you come to that so it it was it it was interesting this is this has been a really long journey paul and uh, a lot of this came to the forefront within the last year year, year and a half. At Selling from the Heart, we have, a, we have a strategic partnership with an organization called the Y Institute. It was founded okay. by Dr. Gary Sanchez. And Dr. Gary Sanchez is actually friends with Simon Sinek. And he brought this to the forefront with Simon Sinek years and years and years ago. And in a nutshell, the Reader's Digest version, Simon says, hey, you know what? You run with this. I got my own thing going on. You run with this. And the whole crux of this, Paul, was there's only nine whys, according to Dr. Gary Sanchez and the Why Institute. Well, I really didn't know what my why was until I took the why.os, which is the operating system. It's called why. And then the .os, which is abbreviated for operating system. I really didn't know what it was until I unpacked my why, my how, and my what. In other words, what makes me tick. Mm-hmm. And it took all of like 10 minutes to to really go through this. But I'm telling you, Paul, it is eerie accurate, eerie accurate. And when 
my when I said my why is I believe success happens when I contribute to a greater cause. I'm a contributor. And mm-hmm. the reason why I bring up brought this to the forefront with sales is about all about the art of the help is once I discovered this, then I went back and I started my sales career in 1987. And I look back on the decades that I was in the office technology space all here in Los Angeles, California, and I go, now I started to understand why I did these things, why I poured into my customers, why I poured into my community. I'm a big contributor and I love helping people. And it came out of my why. And I really didn't know this until I just, you know, I formally went through this process. But, and and the reason why I bring this up is that Selling from the Heart, we talk about this all the time. In order to have greater amounts of outer success, you must be willing to do the inner work. And when you do the inner work, you start unpacking your why. And I'm not here to discredit anyone when I say this. Hang out on social media for any length of time, and you're going to talk about people and their whys. But I believe the whys that people are talking about are the outer layers of their why. It's really hard to unpack the inner part of this if you're not willing to do the work. And the why operating system unpacks your why, your how, and your what. And I just brought this to sales. And that's what I'm bringing through selling from the heart. And I'm, I'm really hoping that people, and I firmly believe this, that when you unpack your why operating system, when you bring that to sales, now you're really going to become crystal clear on this is how it can help, how I can do it, and what you're going to get if you decide I'm the right partner for you. So this why operating system, how... How do they find, how do people find this? Like if I want to go out, do I just Google the why operating system? Is yeah, there a if, test if I you, take? Is there something the, like how? Yeah. If you, if you just simply wanted to find your why, if you allow me to, is you can simply just go to sellingfromtheheart.net forward slash why. Mm-hmm. And you can just click on that and walk you through it. It, it. it literally, you can unpack your why in less than five minutes. And I'm, and I'm here to tell you this. Mm-hmm. Everybody who's gone through this goes, this is eerie accurate. All of our clients, when we bring clients on to Selling from the Heart, they take their Y operating system. Their sales leaders do it. Their sales people take this for the simple reason is they know now what makes them tick and they bring this to life and how they connect to their clients and their future clients in order to do better business. Well, so there's, there's an interesting play here. If, you, if I could take a minute to describe it, because I think there's, there's two camps that I'm seeing that when I talk to a lot of people, there's, there's two camps and there is selling is an assembly line, right? And it is only an assembly line. So I'm going to train people along the assembly line and the things to say and what to do along the assembly line. That camp, there's a lot of truth in, in what, what happens there. And And then there's totally agree. And then there's the other side, which is selling is an individual pursuit and selling is, is about, essentially becoming the self leader that you need to become understanding yourself and then being able to live with others to your full potential, right. And provide them the services you need, but by being truly yourself. So I'm seeing that there's like these two dichotomies that sit out here. One is this huge tech enabled process based driven sales. And the other one over here is you just got to focus on, on you and, and empowering yourself. Where do those meet? So, oh man, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack with what you just said. And as I was sitting there listening to what you're saying, and by the way, I agree. I mean, I agree. There's both camps in this, but I I just want to stress because there's one word I want to just bring out to the open and just get this out there right away Mm -hmm. is when we leverage technology and use the word, when we leverage technology to communicate for us, we're hiding behind technology. And in order for us to bring the best version of ourself forward, I'm asking everyone, whether you're a key executive, a president of a company, a key sales leader, or a sales professional, you got to put yourself in front of technology. I'm not here to poo-pooey technology, none whatsoever. That's Mm -hmm. not the point here, Paul. The point is, is we all know that sales is human to human interaction. And what's happened is so much of us have leaned into technology so much to allow it it basically has a it's I'm just going to go there and you're probably going to hate me for saying this, but we're we're always going to be friends, Paul, is I think technology has made salespeople, sales leaders, 
conversationally incompetent. Mm -hmm. And some of you, right, you can throw daggers at me. I'm a big boy and I can handle it. But when we hide behind technology, we haven't found out what makes us tick, right? We haven't found out how to converse with somebody in a believable manner that's concise, that's clear, that we can deliver with conviction. When we hide behind technology and allow that to speak for us, how can we connect to somebody? We're allowing technology to connect for us. So what happens here? I want us to think about this for a moment. What happens whether you're a BDR, an SDR, an AE, an enterprise salesperson, you name it, insert name of title. If you allow technology to connect for you, and we've been stunted conversationally, then what happens when that person agrees to agree and says, tell me more? You get where I'm going with this, Mr. Fuller? Uh, 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 yeah, I get where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and this, and, and this, and I'm not, and, I, and believe me, I'm not anti technology, none whatsoever, even though it may mm-hmm. sound like I am. I'm actually not. But when you can leverage this in a way to bring the best version of yourself forward, when you're conversationally competent, technology just takes this to the next level. It's like throwing, it's like throwing gas on a fire. But if you mm-hmm. struggle to have conversation with people that's, transformational in nature as opposed to transactional in nature y'all are going to get what you get which is my big huge concern here in the sales world Mm -hmm. we got a lot of great smart people i love every aspect of sales my opinion but what we're not spending enough time on as leaders is how do we help our sales people go from being a sales rep to a sales professional How do we raise their conversational competence? How do we bring business acumen, business conversational skills to the forefront so that we make that first impression a lasting impression, not a first impression, a negative impression? I am so... uh... I'm giving you a virtual hug right now. Those of us that can't see it. But no, the, the bring the best version of yourself forward. Like this is something that I, th- I find incredibly important. And I find there to be a lot of confusion in market around, uh, around what technology should actually do. Right. Even, even things. And I've, I've talked to, uh, I've talked to you know, thousands of people uh-huh. across uh, tons of years around, around what it should do. And, and even things like scripts and cadences and those things, they should they be there as reminders to be able to bring yeah. you out, not yep. not making automatons. That's not what we can do. Like, because your second part of the definition is it's a human to human interaction. So sales is the art of the help, human to human. Yeah. And so how to make people better rather than how to make people robots. Yeah. And, and see, here's what's here's what's interesting. As I was listening to what you're just saying, I had flashbacks and I had flashbacks in my early 20s mm-hmm. and I struggled. I, I grew up in an environment that was kind of boiler room ask in nature. There's a lot of old school stuff. But by the way, something tells me that's still happening today is I remember having to memorize scripts. Mm-hmm. And I grew up pre-internet. So it was, here's your phone script. And then here's what you say when you go out and cold call. Cause that was basically it. There was none of this stuff that we have today. And I would struggle. I had, I just had a mental block in memorization. And I remember an early mentor of mine tell me, you know what? Just get the foundation down, but make it your own. And when you make it your own, you'll feel more comfortable in it. And how many people today are trying to memorize scripts and memorize scripts? And then they deliver it. They haven't found their unique voice. They haven't mm-hmm. struggled in bringing the best version of their self forward. And then they wonder why they get what they get. And then leaders and managers beat up on salespeople because they're not connecting on, you know, when they do have a conversation with somebody. Have you ever just thought, that you haven't gotten to understand your people and what makes them tick and make them comfortable enough to say, hey, you know what? Here's the scripts. Here's the platform. Here's the bullet points. Now, I'm going to work with each and every one of you to bring the best version of yourself out. We're going to role play this. We're going to get deliberate with how we do this. And then 
watch what starts to happen. You start getting AEs, BDRs, SDRs, whatever titles you want to put to salespeople. And now they become comfortable delivering a message. How many salespeople, if they're open and honest, Paul, are struggling because they're trying to memorize something. And as they're memorizing it, deep down in their heart, they're going, this just doesn't jive with who I am. I hate saying this. That's what I used to say to myself. Like, I, <laughs> literally, I, like I would used to say, I, I hate saying this. I, I, this is not how I would say this. This is not who, it's not the, because I was taught, I taught that very same way, right? And then I yeah. finally got to a point where I was leading people and I was like, you know what? The only reason, the only reason that you have a script is so you can forget it. Right. You, that's why I keep on telling people is that you can get, you can get comfortable enough saying this and asking this as you in a million different ways, because there's not a perfect word you're going to say. There's not a perfect thing. What you need to do is connect. Yeah. And, and oh, yes. And here's the thing. And use a word that's near and dear to me, this connecting part. Mm-hmm. It's hard to connect. I'm going to, I'm going to put another word in here. It's hard to connect and relate to somebody if you're hiding behind scripts. Mm-hmm. Now, there's going to be people out there that are probably, gonna, as they listen to this, they're probably going to go, right, I, I'm a script guy or I'm a script gal. Great. So be it. I'm not here to discredit it. Yep. But there, you. this is why you got to get to know your people and what makes them tick. Because there's going to be salespeople that thrive on scripts, that can memorize scripts. They feel comfortable delivering it. And then there's going to be some that aren't comfortable with this. But what you need to ensure is that they get the key points down and they deliver it in a way that connects to someone and helps them relate to somebody because words and messaging matter. And a lot of salespeople are using words and messaging they would never use in everyday conversation. Never, never. ever. In fact, yeah. they may not even know some of the, how they, they may not even know how to define some of the words that they're asking to, <laughs> that they're being told to deliver. Yes. Ima- imagine just for a second, right? And I know this is happening. Just follow along with me. I know this is happening. If we just cut to the chase on this, how many salespeople are delivering a message? That's to say they're just delivering it. They're, used, they're reciting the words word for word. And then you get a savvy Paul Fuller, who's a key decision maker, who happens to just go, you know, I'm going to toy with this person. And then Paul goes, hey, you know, great. Just, hey, man, this was fantastic. I've been waiting for you to call me. Hey, by the way, can you help, you know, when you use the word bottom line, can you help me understand that? How can you contribute to my bottom line? Mm-hmm. And then you get this deer in freaking headlights. It's <laughs> happening, right? It's, I'm telling you, Paul, it's happening day in and day out. And that's what concerns me because how many salespeople are delivering a message and really understand the words behind it and how to define it and how it interacts in the day in the life of the person they're delivering the message to. Let me see if this connects with you because I, 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 um, I'm so on point with you. And I think, I think um, there's a lot in my history that's driving this out. So I started a sales and service company in, in 2007 with a couple of other partners. The crazy thing that we found So we would hire, train, and manage teams for other organizations. The crazy thing that we found um, was that we essentially became a leadership development company. Like that is, that's what we had to do to succeed in that area. We we started with this idea that we could just have you know motivated young people that would come in and we give them some scripts and ideas Uh and they'd come in and and they'd all perform really well because we had the messaging right. Right, it was manure it didn't it didn't work that way what ended up happening is we had to give the salespeople, the young leaders that the ability to be confident in themselves and then deliver things and have a connection because they were calling ceos they were calling yeah. they're calling all these people that but they had to be really good at, at being able to establish a connection and to do that they had to lead themselves and be confident in themselves and understand why they were doing it and and all of that thing so we started this this we started with the foundation of we're going to be we're going to be sales as a service. What we ended up being was leadership development, and it it became it became amazing to watch the transformation in people's lives, as well as the transformation in their ability to then go into any situation and execute. Yep. and that's what I feel like we've missed on. I was a part of that value chain. Okay, an SDR reading a script, this, this, and and you're going to an AE now, and then you're going. 
collectively as a sales world, I think we've missed on this ability to dive in in the past 20 years and create leaders. You even see it in the number of leaders that are in the boardroom these days and where they're coming from. They're not coming from sales anymore. No. And, and, and here, boy, there's a lot. Uh, I There's a lot to unpack with what you just said. And here's what I want us to think about. Uh, I'm going to throw a stake in the ground on this one is I firmly believe this soft skills will yield you hard dollars. Mm hmm. And I want us to think about this for a moment. Soft skills will yield you hard dollars. So now as a leader, and this is, I'm going to really direct this message at leaders. If you'll allow me, Paul, yes, is please. I, I want us to think about this and I'm going to ask leaders who are, who are listening to this. You got to keep an open mind to this for just a moment. You got to just, you got to pour it into your people. And I want you to think about this. Do I have salespeople on my team that lack confidence? Do I have salespeople on my team that have believability issues? Not only believability issues in themselves, but believability issues in their messaging. And as I, as a leader, do I have salespeople on my team who have low self-worth? And I want us to pause and think about that. Because if we're open and honest, as a sales leader, I sure hope you say yes, because that's what I see out in the sales world today in the clients that we're working with at Selling from the Heart is as a leader, I'm going to challenge leaders. You got to lean into your people. You got to understand what makes your people tick. You got to understand what's going on internally, not externally. We focus so much time on external stuff that as leaders, we forgot their people. And what's going on internally? And if we can get to the heart of the matter, no pun on selling from the heart, but if we can get to the heart of what matters as a leader with our salespeople and coach them on confidence, believability, and self-worth, watch what starts to happen in how they deliver their message, bless you, Paul, and how they start delivering this out into the executive world, key decision makers, and influencers. You got a lot of salespeople right now, and I'm going to stick up for salespeople when I say this, because I'm a sales geek at heart. We got a lot of salespeople, though that some of them aren't willing to admit it. We got a lot of salespeople with confidence, believability, and low self-worth issues. And as a leaders, executives, presidents of companies, I want you to realize this. If you fix that, you help coach and guide, inspire, and influence. Watch what starts to happen as your salespeople will run through a brick wall for you. So where do you start? Do you start addressing those issues with leadership, with the leaders uh, at the CEO level, the believability, the confidence, and that type of stuff? How, how do you start this transformation? I, I, it has to start at that level, Paul. It has to. And the only reason is whether it's the president of an organization, C-level executives, they're the captains of the ship. They're steering the ship. It's got to start with them. And if it doesn't, if it tries to start in the mid layers or lower layers, it's only going to get so far. But what's, what's interesting, and the reason why I'm saying this is every organization, every business that we work with here at Selling from the Heart, if it doesn't fit into our values, if it doesn't fit into what we do here at Selling from the Heart, I don't engage. I want, I want leaders out there that already are heart centered, that believe in all of this. Not to say that we can't work with organizations and all that with leaders who don't believe in it. But I want, I want leaders to understand that at the heart of all of this is you got to get to know your people. And we have a lot of leaders who are great leaders. They just don't know their people. And I, the best way to start is as a leader, I'm going to ask you, just understand what makes your people tick. What's their why? What's their how? What's their what? What lights their fire? What makes them come alive? What makes them tick? I've always said, I've, I've always said this, and I will, I, will, I will throw a stake in the ground on this one, is if sales leaders and executives can lean into their people. When I say lean in, that's selling from the heart. I use the term just give a rip. If they can truly give a rip about their people, and look at their people as humans and not revenue generating numbers. 
watch what starts to happen. And I've always said this stuff's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. We're in a people business. If you're in sales, I firmly, firmly believe this. You're in the people business and you're in the relationship building business. And these are the two things, pardon the expression, that most people suck at. And we're humans because we assume as leaders, we assume our salespeople understand people and we understand relationships. And I will tell you this, it's not the truth. I see it day in and day out in the organizations that I work with. We have salespeople that are struggling with people skills and relational skills. If you as a leader, and I'm going to point this right at leadership, if you as leaders can coach and guide and nurture your salespeople, they're the revenue generating portion of your company. If you can help them with their people skills and relationship building skills, that all leads to trust and that all leads to credibility, that has a direct tie into revenue. I also or, or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. Yeah. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna ask you this question because I think I'm gonna take it even a step further, which is I, I truly believe um we're at a point now where relationally we're probably at our lowest point historically of whether this people to people relation ability, like in, in the next generation coming in has fewer relationship skills in the yep. human to human, right. To actually understand and know, uh, and that's of no fault of their own. So I, but I do think you can start to, and I've, I've done it. Like you start to watch the investment in the younger generation as they, as they, take the relationship skills as they know them, as they understand them and live it. It's life changing. It's career changing. It's future changing. And it starts to make sales. I think sales is, is almost people say sales is on the, the downswing and AI is going to take it. I actually so firmly believe against it. I think sales is going to be on the firm upswing because there's going to be a huge pushback. We have to understand people in relationships to do commerce. It's just the way of the world. No. So, so, Here's here's the thing is is let's just get this out in the open. If we do not sell things, money doesn't move through the economy at the rate that it needs to move through. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Now let's just take this one step farther. And we all know where read anything, whether that be from Gartner, whether that be from Edelman, whether that be from Gallup, we all know where the trust factor sits in the sales world today. It's anemically low. It is so low. I can just take a baby step and walk right over it. I don't even have to take a running head start and jump over it. It's really low. And what I want us to think about as leaders is this. Real relationships drive real revenue. Real relationships drive real revenue, which drive real referrals, which drives long-term sales sustainability. And what I want us to think about, I'm going to go into the R word because I've asked this. I've asked this over and over and over again to sales leaders, and no one has given me an answer yet. Not one leader has given me an answer, and I'm waiting for it, is I will look leaders in the eye, whether it be face-to-face or on any kind of virtual call, and I will ask leaders, do relationships matter? Do your client relationships matter? Are they important to you? And overwhelmingly, you get a yes, right? And then I will say this, then if relationships matter to you, they're important to you, then what are you doing to coach, nurture, and facilitate relationship building skills with your salespeople? Crickets. I literally hear crickets. Now I say this, is if relationships are important to you, I want you to think of your best client right now. And I'll ask leaders, now conjure up that picture, right? You're thinking of your best client right now, the best relationship. Now, here's the question. The relationships that you believe you have with that client, is that the same that they believe the relationship is? Boom. And crickets again, which leads me down the path of why I say the things that I do and why I believe soft skills will yield leaders hard dollars. Is you're in the people business and you're in the relationship building business, yet most salespeople stink at it and most salespeople aren't coached to it. And that's why I write in Selling from the Heart that most salespeople are consistently inconsistent. 
we're not giving them the two. Yeah. We're not we're not giving them the tools as leaders to effectively go out and build relationships and build people skills to turn into revenue. We're hitting them with product training, sales skills training, all all stuff that Paul. I'm here to say is all important stuff. We're missing another trifecta on this. That's people and relationships. You want to build trust and credibility in a world that doesn't trust salespeople? You got to hone in on the thing that moves the needle. It's not product training. It's people training. It's relationship training. It's conversational training. It's how do I, as a leader, help my salespeople build trust in a world that doesn't trust salespeople? So where did you, you're a contributor. Right. So you, you said that and your purpose, your purpose that you honed in on really, really tight is to be that contributor in helping people. Right. That is a big part of your why. So how did selling from the heart come out of that? Like, where did you where did you find this passion and start to just dive in and become this sales geek and, and dive in with people? Uh, because I had a transformational moment at 50 years old. At 50 years old, I was career adjusted right out of the space that I grew up in. So I spent from, you know, the late 80s until the mid 2010s in the office technology space. And at 50 years old, I had a life altering moment, transformational moment, and I was career adjusted out of corporate America. Let's just face it. It happens. First time it ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it just I went from the highest of highs to the lowest valley I've ever been into in my whole life at 50. And that was almost nine years ago. And I had one of two choices. I could either go back into the same world that I had grown up in and ride off into a very complacent sunset. Or I could go back and go, okay, now what's the next journey for me? And I did a lot of soul searching and a lot of crying. And my wife said, put on your big boy pants. And let's just figure out what that next chapter of your life is. I made one phone call. One phone call I made, and that was to my near and dear friend, Daryl Amy, which, Paul, you know Daryl. Mm -hmm. And after two, almost a three-hour phone call, he goes, you know what, Larry? You don't need to go back into sales. What you need to do is go coach and train salespeople on what made you so successful selling a very highly commoditized product in one of the largest cities in the United States, that being Los Angeles. I said, Daryl, I don't even know where to start. I've never written an article, never wrote a book, never started a podcast, never coached and trained salespeople, but I'm willing to figure it out. And I just brought how I carried myself out into the world. And now I'm living out my why and I'm bringing to the forefront things that I wish would have been coached and trained to me. But it wasn't. It's because that's how I grew up. That's how I was raised. And this is how I held myself accountable was this. And all of a sudden, you know, selling from the hearts born through a podcast, through a book. And now we coach and train highly relational industries on how to build trust and credibility. And it's all about bringing business substance, sincerity, authenticity to the forefront to help overcome the lack of trust and credibility. And we have a clear path with leaders on how to turn this into revenue. And I'm just living out my why. We, and just so uh, everybody's aware, we signed on to this podcast. And Daryl is, uh, I said Daryl, Larry is smiling. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Daryl, you're listening to this. Uh, Larry's, Larry's smiling. He looks like he's having the time of his life doing the work that he's meant to do. He, he greets me. I've been waiting for this for a long time. And I saw it. And I have too. I've been loving it. And he's bringing this energy uh, that is extremely real and is, you could just see, is exuding from every part of your pore. There's no act in this. This is not, and I just appreciate that so much about you You finding that why and living it out. I think it's uh, it's absolutely evident. No, and Paul, I, I really appreciate it. It means a lot, and I'm super grateful to have this time to, you know, to share what's on my heart. But this is what I want to share with people is... I'm deeply connected to this message. I'm a true practitioner. And I have no problem sitting down with key executives, sales leaders, and salespeople and say, hey, you know what? I eat my own dog food, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Not only do I cook it, I eat it. 
And this is me. You get what you get. However, I've learned more in my 50s than I have in my 20s, 30s, and 40s combined. And maybe it's the life-altering moment I had nine years ago, but I've been willing to do the work. And through bringing Selling from the Heart to the forefront, I've learned more about myself since the podcast, since the book, and since bringing this to the forefront than I ever have in all the other decades selling. Because I've been willing to go on the journey. I've been willing to go on the journey inward. And that's where I can look somebody in the eye and say, listen, if you as a leader want to just monumentally grow your business, it's okay to bring soft skills to the forefront here. And, and I think I'm just going to speak openly on this. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of sales leaders, they understand some of this, but they're going, how do I make the connection to revenue? And I totally get it. How do I take all this mushy, gushy uh, stuff, right? That's touchy feely. That's nice that I know deep down in my heart is what we do personally. But how do I bring this to the forefront professionally so that I can grow my company, grow my clients, grow my revenue, grow my referrals, grow my salespeople in order to create a culture that people want to come work for? And that's what we're doing at Selling from the Heart. I'm just delivering this in a way that's easy to understand, digest, and then take out in the field and put into action. Can I can I challenge your your language for a second? Sure, that's all good. Yeah, no, you say because you say soft skills, but I hear you. I hear you describing the hardest work that somebody can do. Right, I hear you describing diving in and taking someone from a from you know consciously incompetent to to becoming a a self leader. Yep. And and transfer trans I mean transforming inwardly is some of the hardest work you could potentially do and you need to bring and you yep. that is some of the hardest skills it's the you hardest. could potentially learn. Yep. So and, and it's the necessary skills and and here's what's interesting is on the selling from the heart podcast we get really cool guests. I mean, I've had retired lieutenant colonels from our armed services. I've had chief revenue officers, I've had uh, influential people, I've had well-known book authors, and I'll always ask them these questions. Not every time, but you know, often enough, hey, describe what your morning looks like. What's the first hour of your day look like? Mm-hmm. What are y'all reading? Walk me through what that looks like. And every single time, it's all inner work related. And as lead as leaders, if you want to move the needle monumentally, just understand what makes your people tick. And I'm a big believer in this, is if you think of any of the leaders that are out there, the leaders that I look up to, Paul, the leaders you look up to, they do two things better than anybody else. They inspire and they influence. And so what I want us to think about is if you can buy into just those two words that leaders do better than anybody else. You as the president of a company, you as a key executive, even you as a sales leader, what are you doing to inspire and influence your salespeople into becoming the best versions of themselves so in turn, they can go out and take better care of your clients so that in turn, It can increase your revenue so that in turn, you can grab referrals from happy clients that keep coming back for more and more and more of what your salespeople are delivering. But I will tell you this, if you as a leader do not pour into your people, do you think they're going to pour into your clients? And where do you know what that answer is? Mm -hmm. What is the saying? You can't uh, pour from an empty cup. Yep. And so, so if I play on that, you as a sales leader, what are you doing to pour into your salespeople's cups? Yep. Think about that one. It's, it's uh, the premise, right? The premise and is one that's near and dear to my heart. And I define uh, people that have listened to the show before. No, I define sales in three ways. And it's, I had a very similar thing to you. I, I needed to define it very succinctly. I, I say leadership, service, and wayfinding. So leadership, you have to lead yourself before you can lead, help lead anybody else to a vision. Service, you need to understand understand what somebody needs and help them get what they need. 
And then wayfinding is to be able to find a way to walk that path together relationally yep. and organizationally, right? Yep. And so the concept I, I keep coming back to leading your selling from the heart becomes to me is is being able to to develop that that self leadership. And I'm putting it in my own words, not yours, but sure. I keep hearing it come back is be able to s- develop that why, that internally, that why, how, what so strongly that you know you can make an impact for somebody. And if you don't, then you don't need to work with them. (laughs) For the right type of person, you know you can make an impact for them and you know you can walk walk that walk with them. No, you know, so important. No, absolutely. And um, here's here's what I just want everyone to think about. And after I say this, I want everyone just to stop and think about what I just said. And it goes like this. If you all want to achieve the results that no one's achieving, then are, are you willing to do the things that no one is doing? And just reflect on that for a moment. If you want to achieve the results that no one's achieving, then are you willing to do the things that no one's doing? And just however you all want to think and reflect upon that, digest it. But I'm here to tell you this, that as a leader, if you want to achieve the results that no other business is achieving, then are you willing to do the things that no one's doing? And I'm going to let you all just stew on that one. And think about it. But we all have room to become even better than we are today. Well, and I think that's a great, great uh, capper for an amazing conversation. Um, I'm going to ask Larry, how do people get in touch with you if they if they want to learn more? Uh, you can go hit the website. You can go to sellingfromtheheart.net. You can learn anything you want to learn about what we're up to. Uh, we do a weekly podcast. You can find it on any of your favorite podcast platforms or now on YouTube. Uh, if you want a free copy of Selling from the Heart, just go to sellingfromtheheart.net forward slash book. I'd be more than happy to send you one signed. All you need to do is pay for shipping and handling. And then you can find me all over LinkedIn. And I'm not hard to find. It's just Larry Levine, L-A-V-I-N-E. Well, man, keep shining bright. Keep doing the work you're doing. It's so important for this generation of sales and the next. And uh, I could... Larry is jumping out of the screen uh, when he's talking (laughs) about this stuff with excitement. So it is so awesome to see you just absolutely um, receiving a blessing and knowing your why and then giving it to others in the way that you are. It's it's, uh, inspirational. So keep after it, man. It's been awesome. No, I appreciate it. I'm super grateful. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to the next time. All right. Well, everybody, you out there, keep shining bright as well. And thank you so much for joining us on the Art and Science of Complex Sales. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Art and Science of Complex Sales. Please take a moment, like, subscribe, share this podcast on all your favorite platforms, and let's get the word out. This podcast is proud to be brought to you by Membrane.com. We are the world's top B2B sales platform. And in the world of B2B sales, with everything from prospecting to business acquisition to managing complex growth, Membrane has the right size technology for your sales team. Our latest innovation, the Coaching Cockpit, empowers your leaders, managers, and team with the information and tools they need to take their skills to the next level and to take advantage of the exponential power of effective sales coaching. With our technology and the top team of sales partners around the world, Membrane is helping to achieve our driving vision. This is, quite simply, elevating the sales profession. To learn more, find us at www.membrane.com, that is M-E-M-B-R-A-I-N.com, or contact us via email at sales at membrane.com. Keep shining bright and have a wonderful day. Mm-hmm.